I'm standing in front of a 119 year old farmhouse. Now restoring this thing will be an awesome process for the homeowner. But there are some things that homeowners really need to think about before they tackle a project like this because there can be some really nasty effects that it could have on your health. Let's take a look inside here. You can see we've got the nice big front porch. You walk in, you've got the high ceilings, but there are also some other things that might not come to your attention right away. Now, what is this doing here? We have a heat duct going up to the second floor that's literally being held together with duct tape. Now, this obviously isn't the proper way to do it, but I can tell you why it's here. It's because these old homes didn't have any heating or air conditioning, obviously, in the upstairs. So there's this really jank way of getting the airflow up there. This really brings us to the first big problem with these old houses is that there's no circulation in them. If you look around this room, you know, we do have vents in the floor that are both taking and delivering air. And on the first floor here, it's not too bad. But when we go upstairs here, you're going to find out that, what do you know, there's no vents in here whatsoever. You look over here on the wall, you can see how the past owner was making do. They've got a little on-wall heat unit here. We take a step into the other room over here and we'll see the little system they have rigged up. Here it is coming from that funny duct down in the living room and it just pops up and spits into those two rooms. So what you wind up with is you've got some hot air, but you don't have anything taking it out of here. So that is not good as far as circulation goes, as far as air quality goes. Now, if you look down at the floor here, what are these obvious patches? These are the old heat system, the old circulation system. You see what a lot of these old farmhouses had was just a gravity heat system to where there was a vent in the floor and a vent in the ceiling below and the air would just come up and the hot air would rise and it would come up here. There's pretty much one of these in every room up here. But obviously that wasn't a very efficient system. So most houses now have them closed in and some other hack work sadly because most renovation is not done that well. To tag team onto the lack of just good airflow is just the amount of dust and debris that you will find inside the walls, inside the cavities. It's everywhere if you open up one of these old houses. Down inside this floor here, I saw down in it and it was just full of dust, debris, all sorts of stuff. And especially with a floor like this, which is pine that's directly nailed over the joist. There is no subfloor. This is the subfloor. All that dust and debris is going to affect the air quality of the house. But even new houses will have that to some degree. Most contractors are not cleaning out stud bays, cleaning out under the stairs, etc., before they drywall it in. Now, in these old houses, you're almost guaranteed to find some type of toxic old building product, either lead paint or asbestos. I'm here in the kitchen, and you can see that there's an old stick-down tile here. Now, I don't believe these are actually asbestos, but a lot of times they are. So you do need to watch out for that sort of thing. A lot of times your floors, your stairs, they'll be painted in a grayish paint that's almost a little bit blue. That is oftentimes lead-based paint. But a lot of people already know about that, so let's move on to the next thing. When you walk into this room here, you can almost feel the moisture hit you. You can smell a musty smell in the air, which I've been told I have a sensitive nose, but to me, I smell mold. Underneath the walls, you've got kind of this black powder coming out, which I believe is literally broken down wood that's turned back into dirt up here. We've clearly had a leak. On the outside of the house, you saw it's that old split face block, which is not good for moisture control. At least the condensation on the backside, which can lead to mold. But the absolute worst part of this house is down below. If you've never seen a Michigan basement before, this is a Michigan basement. Now they've had work done in here, but you can see the bottom is dug out just enough for a short guy like me to stand up in here. There's this ledge all the way around and they've put some concrete over it, but a lot of times you'll come down and there'll be just dirt in the bottom of these. Now, if you were here with me, you'd feel like you'd had stepped into a cave. It's obviously incredibly moist down here and that's going to be very, very hard to control. This moisture is forever just wicking up from the earth going up into the subfloor inside the house and, and making everything wet. Now, luckily in an old house like this, it's not like OSB. We've actually got pine plank here, which will be much more resistant to molding and rotting. And I actually don't see a whole lot of mold up here. There definitely is some, I mean, 
That looks like mold to me. But there's no sump pump down here. There's no drainage around the foundation that's taking water away from this house. And to truly remedy this, you know, to me seems next to impossible without lifting the house up and putting a modern foundation with modern drainage underneath. I take that back actually. There is a very ghetto sump pump over here. Oh boy, there's a dead mouse in it. I don't think you've got any underground drainage pipe going into it. It's just for when the basement floods, which you can see by looking at the ground, the basement obviously floods. It's pretty much to be expected. This is like a pond underneath the house. There were no sump pumps in 1906, so they're not gonna have pipe around the house unless they could make it gravity flow down somewhere else. Now a house like this will have had who knows how many renovations done to it, five, 10, and obvious additions. Oftentimes you look at them and you say, oh yeah, there's, the first house, the second house, and the third house, and they just jammed them all together. Obviously, you need to think about things like lead pipes as well, but the biggest problems you're gonna have in these old houses come from air quality, from poor air movement to dust and debris everywhere, and from poor moisture control. So if you're gonna get an old house, definitely think about these things. And just know, unless you plan to DIY it, a 2,000, 3,000 square foot house like this could easily eat 500 grand in the Midwest like it's nothing. If you're interested on how to renovate an old house to make it healthy, I'm gonna make a guide that will be linked down below. So go check that out. Thanks for watching guys and please subscribe.